our uh, second public hearing on the RCEP agreement to order. This is uh, by the Committee on Foreign Relations. This is a continuation of our hearing last October 29, correct? Comsec 2021. Yes, sir. Okay, so for the record, uh, but I do not see any colleague uh, present, so I will not uh, acknowledge any senator at this uh, moment in time. The co committee secretary, Ms. Su Kandao, will now uh, quickly, for the record, make for the record the attendance of our uh, resource persons. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, our distinguished guests. This afternoon, we have from the De Department of Foreign Affairs, Acting Director Anthony Aguirre, International Econ Economic Policy and Negotiations, Attorney Neil Brillantes from the Office of Treaties and Legal Affairs, from the Department of Trade and Industry, we have uh, ASEC, uh, Assistant Secretary Alan B. Hepti from the Industry Development and Trade Policy. Under Secretary Seferino Rodolfo, we'll be following in a bit. He is from the Industry Development and Trade Policy. We have Director Angelo Salvador Benedictos from the Bureau of International Trade Relations and Commercial Attaché Jeremiah Reyes from the ASEAN Foreign Trade Service Corps in Jakarta. From the Department of Agriculture, we have Assistant Secretary Noel Padre, Ms. Tisha Pia de la Rosa, Ms. Annalyn Lopez. From the Department of Energy, we have Assistant Secretary Paulo Pondevilla and Assistant Director Michael O. Sinocruz. From the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, we have Ms. Liarina Mojica, Attorney May Casita, from the Land Management Bureau, Ms. Fatima Milan from the Environmental Management Bureau, Mr. Eugene Sayosa from the Forest Management Bureau, Ms. Alina Tambasen, Mines and Geoscience Bureau, Engineer Edgar Madera, Attorney Joanna Saradiva, and Mr. Alejandrino Sibucao. From the Department of Finance, we have Assistant Secretary Soledad Emilia Cruz. From the Department of Health, we have Director Maria Soledad Antonio from the Bureau of International Health Cooperation. And, if, and from the FDA, we have Engineer Cecil Matienzo, Ms. Icon Barcelon, Ms. Melody Borlagdatan. From the Department of Justice, we have State Counsel Bernadette Ongoko. From the DBM Government Procurement Policy Board, we have Attorney Melissa Santiago Yan. From the National Economic Development Authority, we have Director Bien A. Ganapin, Ms. Maria Cecilia Labada, Ms. Laura Lopez, Mr. Jeremiah Rafela, Ms. Maria Millicent Orhel, Ms. Madeline Monteramos. From the Philippine Competition Commission, we have Attorney Ramon Jeriel Sawit, Attorney Jared Rivera. From the Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Attorney Ella Javier Padilla, Attorney Ann Kathleen Gatdula, and Assistant Director Violeta Infante. And from the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, we have Dr. Francis Mark A. Kimba. From the Academe, we have Dr. Cesar Cororaton of the Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University of the USA, Dr. George Manzano, Dean of School of Economics from the University of Asia and the Pacific. Ms. Arlene Innocencio from De La Salle University School of Economics. And we have also additionally invited Attorney Golda Benjamin, Professor of Law from the Siliman University. From the non-government organizations, we have our confirmed guest, Mr. Ruben Pascual from the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Attorney Anthony Abad, oh, I'm sorry, he has not confirmed yet. Mr. Joseph Puruganan from the Trade Justice Filipinas, Mr. Joshua Mata from Central Labor Center, Mr. Attorney Tony Salvador from the Third World Network, Mr. Rolly Jar Joseph Castillo from the Labor Education and Research Network, former Undersecretary Ernesto Ordonez, 
And uh, we also have former Department of Agriculture Secretary Leonardo Montemayor, and also Mr. Raul Montemayor from the Federation of Free Farmers. Federation of Free Farmers. That's all for now, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, Comsec Sue. I could see the name of uh, Senator Marcos, so please ask her staff if she if she has no objection, we, we will mark her as uh, present. Yes, sir. Okay, so so uh, this is a continuation of our first hearing. So uh, last time, yata we we stopped with the inputs from. Uh, from Ms. Attorney Tony Salvador. Yes, from uh, Ms. Attorney Tony Salvador of the Third World Network. So, uh, Comsec, you, you're you're telling me we have uh, additional resource persons from NGOs. So we, we better continue with the non-governmental organizations. Okay. Uh, sir, we have today. Time, sino... Yes, sir. We have, sir, today former Secretary of Agriculture, Leonardo Montemayor. He is also representing the Federation of Free Farmers Pop with sige, Mr. Go ahead. Uh, sige, sige. Si ano na muna, si Secretary Montemayor. Sir, you have the floor. Yeah. Uh, magandang hapon, Senator Coco. Uh, also to Senator Marcos. Uh, unang una po, maraming salamat sa inyong panyaya. You see, uh, Mr. Chairman, after so many years, this is the first time that we are getting uh, information regarding this uh, RCEP agreement. And, and also, uh, thanks to you, the uh, constitutional provisions regarding the right of the citizens to uh, information on matters of public concern. This is Section 7 of the Bill of Rights. And Section 12, Article 13. Uh, which mentions the, that the right of people's organizations uh, and the people themselves to uh, effective participation in policy making by government shall not be abridged. So, now, Mr. Chairman, those two constitutional provisions are being given substance and meaning uh, in, this, in this hearing today. So, as I said, thank you so much. Uh, I also feel a sense of kumbaga, deja vu. Mr. Chairman, because I remember way back in 1993, I was then a uh, first termer in the House of Representatives. I gave a privileged speech, uh, the title of which was GAT Dash Uruguay Round, a voodoo trade bridging. Because uh, the practitioners of voodoo, the practic like the practitioners of black magic or voodoo, Yung pong mga drum beaters po ng accession ng Philippines sa uh, WTO were saying that by joining the WTO, we would gain uh, so, so high a level of exports, economic growth, I think 500,000 jobs, and uh, a lot of uh, other uh, benefits. So kumbaga parang sabi nila, this is the one, this is the magic potion that will cure the Philippine economy and our society of poverty and so many ills. Well, Mr. Chairman, in 1999, uh, I was with the Philippine delegation together with Sila Senator Maceda and other uh, members of the legislature to attend the first ministerial conference in Seattle, Washington, USA, uh, to inaugurate the, uh, well, the WTO. And uh, alam po Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, we were faced by the reality that there were so many people against the uh, WTO and the Cat Uruguay Round Agreements as it was enforced. So alam po ninyo, naghintay po kami ng matagal dun sa venue ng opening ng session na yun. Kinansel po kasi sa laki po ng mga demonstrasyon. Hindi lang po sa Seattle but I think across the United States and all over the world. Na uh, imbis na nakatulong po itong agreements na ito, eh lalong lumaki po yung agwat between the rich nations and the poor nations. And within nations, lumaki din po agwat between the rich and the poor. So, 
tilag ngayon na naman po with this RCEP agreement, the same uh, you know optimistic projections are being uh, given to us. So, sana po with with the past experience behind us, perhaps we can take a more careful look uh, at how realistic the supposed benefits uh, are in this particular agreement. Alam po, Mr. Chairman, while we acknowledge that there will be opportunities under this RCEP, hindi po automatic. We will not enjoy these benefits automatically. So we need to know what are the preparations, what are the budgetary allocations, etc., that are being set in place or have been set in place so that once we enter this uh, agreement, we will really enjoy these benefits. Hindi lang po magiging parang walang to, parang pie in the sky kind of uh, benefits. And secondly, while the opportunities are not automatic, the threats are very real, Mr. Chairman. Kasi bubuksan po natin lalo yung ating merkado. At uh, kung hindi po tayo handa, uh, for example, yung pong mga carrots and had other highland vegetables from China will penetrate our markets. And kawawa naman po yung ating mga magsasaka dyan po sa Benguet at saka sa Cordilleras pag hindi po tayo handa na sumalubong po dito sa threat na wala po sa cheaper and possibly better quality vegetables po from China. Hi, Mr. Chairman, just before I complete this short intro, uh, sinasabi po sa atin, we have to board the bus now. Kasi kung hindi po tayo sasakay sa RCEP agreement, which comes in the force what January of next year, we will be left behind. Di ba? But, you know, Mr. Chairman, India has decided to be left behind. They feel they're not yet ready and they do not want to put at risk their uh, interest, I think particularly in the case of agriculture and their farmers. So, are we willing to stay behind a little bit, Mr. Chairman, to make sure that our vulnerable citizens, especially in this case our farmers and workers, are properly safeguarded. Kaya po importante pong masuri nating mabuti itong mga detalye ng agreement na ito para matsak po natin na wala pong masasagasaan ang, ng bus. Supposing sakay na po tayo ngayon, akurado po tayo, eh baka marami pong masasagasaan. And then, I find it difficult to accept, Mr. Chairman, the, the argument that the, uh, well, the Senate uh, is being asked to consider and to study this, this uh, treaty, proposed treaty, and yet you are being told, Your Honors, that we have no choice but to join. Ano ba ito? Ang Senado gagawin natin uh, rubber stamp because we have no choice but to join? Wala ko pang uh, kakayahan, abilidad ang ating mga Senado na pag-aralan ng mabuti. As you, you indeed, you, you will be doing, Mr. Chairman, to make sure that really this is a uh, over, overall in the net a good agreement. Yun po. Uh, isa pa po, Mr. Chairman, final po. Where po we are told to, as I said, join now. But where are the safety nets? Where are the measures to make us competitive? Hindi naman po pwedeng basta tatalon tayo just like a trapeze uh, one, artist in the circus, hindi mo pwedeng basta tatalon po sa flying trapeze na hindi pa po na, na install po yung safety net. What if the safety net is a mosquito net or a kulambo? Are we willing to what? jump into that uh, rain and risk being injured and, uh, you know, and, and as, as indeed has happened over the past several years since we joined the GAT WTO. And by the way, Mr. Chairman, I also heard in the past hearing that we already have free trade agreements in place. Hindi ba? Yung ASEAN plus uh, the other partners who are also in the proposed RCEP. Australia, Japan, uh, South Korea, and New Zealand, uh, etc. We already have free trade agreements with them. So what, what is there to lose uh, such a big magnitude that we cannot, you know, give more time to really study the ramifications of this treaty. And uh, finally, Mr. Chairman, just me cite some major areas of concern 
to highlight why I, I request, we request the Senate to please give more time for the sectors to understand, absorb these uh, agreements, and also for the senators to judge for themselves the wisdom of immediately joining the RCEP. Example na lang po, ito pong issue po ng government subsidies. Okay. Magiging stricto yato ipagbabawal ng RCEP po yung paggamit ng government subsidies sa mga industriya po natin. Paano po po yung mga industriya na gusto pong suportahan ng ating gobyerno? ay napakahalaga po yan para sa ating treatment po ng pandemic. For example, our health industry, probably this, this needs a lot of uh, government fund, financial uh, fund, support. The RCEP will be quite strict, I believe, on, on these types of government, uh, on government subsidies in general. And other industries that are important for economic recovery. Will this not tie the hands of government in giving the necessary assistance to these industries for pandemic, for pandemic treatment and for economic recovery. Sa po yun. Fishing subsidies po. Right now po, malaki pong problema ito kasi sa laki po ng government subsidies sa mga fishing fleets, for example, in Japan, possibly in China, masyado pong overfish ang mga mapan po karagatan po sa buong mundo. And in the case of the West Philippine Sea, marami pong pumapasok dyan na foreign fleets, hindi po natin magwarkahan. How, how will this RCEP address this issue of government subsidies to fund overseas uh, fishers? And uh, we may not wait, Mr. Chairman, but malamang marami po sa mga lumarating na galunggong isda mula sa Pilipinas ay galing po dito sa mga fishing fleets na nangingisla mismo sa ating karagatan sa West Philippine Sea. Pangalawa po, Mr. Chairman, yung pong mga binhi, seeds. Okay? Let me cite the example, Mr. Chairman, of corn. Right now, about 800,000 hectares of land, especially in Mindanao, are planted to BT corn. Ito po ay isa pong GMO uh, na ginagamit po ng humigit kumulang apat na raan hanggang limang daang libong magmamais. Sa kasalukuyan po, sila po ay gumagamit po ng mga binhe na, na, na ano na rin po, na contaminate rin po ng mga BT kwan eh, seeds mula po sa mga kwan, kumpanya, kaya po ng Syngenta, Pioneer, at saka Bayer. At alam po niyo Mr. Chairman, naniningil po itong mga kumpanya nito sa ating mga magsasaka na dati-dati po, they save these seeds they possibly exchange seeds with other farmers. So, tinatarin nila. So, nakakamura po sila sa kanilang seed inputs. But under this RCEP, hindi po maliwanag o tila baka ipilit po nila na masakop po yung ating seed uh, system in the Philippines nitong UPO 91. Ito pong UPO, ito po yung Office for Plant Variety Protection na principally to protect the rights of plant breeders. Ginagamit po ito ng mga kwan, multinationals. How will this impact now, this RCEP agreement on the rights of our farmers who are traditionally saving their own seeds, but the seeds that are now, that are saving, which have been contaminated, contaminated by BT corn, ito po ng mga kwan, pagwa po ng mga GMO, ng mais, hindi kayo lalo magmamahal po ang mga binhi mismo na being saved by our farmers. And certainly this will uh, affect so much the situation po of our farm, farm farmers. Uh, Pangatlo po, yung issue po ng labor standards. Mukhang tahimik po itong, kwan eh, itong RCEP sa issue ng labor standards. Unlike in the WTO, there is a linkage between observance, especially what are called core labor standards, like the right to freedom of association, the, the, the one, prohibition of forced labor, including prison labor and child labor. Bawal na bawal po yan sa lalim po ng uh, WTO. I think RCEP is very quiet when it comes to this. So what if we have a country that joins the RCEP that uses prison labor in their industries ano po, or child labor? So nakakamura po sila ng malaki, nakakatipid po sila sa kanilang labor costs Kaya yung produkto po nila ngayon, 
na ilulubos nila at papasok sa ating bansa, sobra itong mura. At magkaroon pa pa ng additional market access kasi magkakaroon po ng lowering of tariffs. So, hindi mo ba unfair yan? O are we willing to expose our industries, not just agriculture, to this type of one? unfair uh, treatment because of the failure of the RCEP to take into account and to recognize at the very least for labor standards. Also, migrant workers' rights, Mr. Chairman. Protectado bang ating mga overseas Filipino workers na napapalod dito sa 15 countries that will be what, circulating within the RCEP uh, agreement? How will their rights be fully protected? Kasi siyempre po, Every country will try to maximize its uh, what? advantages. They will try to keep labor costs down. Also, the, the companies that operate therein will do that. Hindi po kaya agrabyado po ang ating mga migrant workers. So, ano po yung mga safeguards at programa at yung pamalaan para mapangalagayan po yung ating mga magawa? The same will go, Mr. Chairman, uh, two more points. Sa issue po ng environment, Take the case of Bukidnon, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, ang lakas po ng pressure ngayon na i-convert ang malak malaking areas po, hindi lang po ng ating kapatagan, kundi po yung ating forestal areas sa Bukidnon to plantation crops. Kasi po, once we enter the RCEP agreement, magkakaroon po na mas malaking market access eh. Yung ating mga kwan, commercial crops like pineapple, and banana. So if there was already pressure before for the companies operating these uh, commercial farms in Bukidnon and other parts of Mindanao to expand, lalo pong dadami po ang problema dyan. At alam naman po natin, when you talk about pineapple or banana plant commercial agriculture, pan po yan eh. Mono, monocrop po yan eh. Hindi pwedeng isabay po yung forest trees when you have a plant, uh, pineapple plantation. And yet, they are now converting, Mr. Chairman, areas under community-based forest management agreements awarded by DNR to pineapple and banana plantations. I feel this trend will become uh, much ano, bigger. At siyempre po, siyempre pag monocrop, like uh, pineapple, malakas ang gamit po ng abono, chemical, tsaka mga pesticides, so the problems of uh, soil toxification, malalasod po yung lupa, simply po yung soil erosion will become bigger because of the absence of... Secretary, uh, sec Secretary uh, yes. uh, you have many more points kasi better... At least better... Final na po. Ah, sige, pakiwind up na lang po. Pero paki, pakibigyan din po kami ng ano, kung pwede sana, uh, some document uh, so we can, all, we can uh, always... Uh, uh, conveniently come back to your points. Okay. So, okay. Secretary, go ahead. Uh, can kindly wind up, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll prepare the written paper after this. Yung final po, yung final is a dispute settlement mechanism. Wala pong maliwanag na sistema rito sa RCEP kung paano po malulutas yung mga problema. Kung ano ba, magkaroon ng pan, alitan ang mga bansa. Unlike in the WTO, there's a very clear system of adjudication of disputes. Dito po, wala eh. So, ano yan? Palakasan po kung sino partido na malakas, malaking bansa, makakalaman po sa mga maliliit. So, anyway, Mr. Chairman, yun lang po ang ilang sa mga ko. Okay. Okay. I'm only mentioning some of the key points we have struck me so far. But I, I am pretty confident marami pong issues dito na nagkakalaman na mabuti ng ating Senado bago po tayo ng Senado ng Pustamus na yan. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman, for your patience. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Comsec, there, there is some noise or... Uh, Coming in, yes, paki, paki check na lang. Pinaharap uh, ko nga po eh, hindi ko lang pakita. Paki check na lang. Uh, then, uh, oh, sige, uh, dito si uh, former Undersecretary Ordonez. Yes, uh, sir. Yes, sir. He want, uh, if, if he wants to share something, uh, Thank go you, ahead, Mr. sir. I will be only four minutes or less. I have four points. First point, what happened to agriculture in WTO is disastrous. Because instead of getting positive, we got negative. And it's because there was sloppy work. It was not done well. We don't want that to happen again. It may happen again. That's the first point. We don't want it to happen again. Second point, if you look at the study, okay, there are four aspects of that study. A good agreement means we increase our exports to create jobs, we less imports keep our jobs, the trade balance is good for the country, and foreign investments are fine. 
in each case, please look at the study given Focus Global South. Incidentally, it is documented in Inquiry Today in my column, but I give it as a paper to you yesterday. All right. In imports, we will lose $8 billion. In exports, in, in imports, we will increase imports by $8 billion. We lose export to other countries by $5 billion. Our bonds will be bad by $13 billion. And they say with this, kind, with this thing will come investments. Investments are not a function of trade agreements only. It's more consistent governance, which you yourself have talked about. Okay, stability, the price, etc. Third point, third point. When they say we were left behind, let us find out. Because to be honest with you, Senator, I was understaffed of DTI, understaffed of DA, and secretary in the office of the president where I saw all these things move. And I've seen agreements, I've been to WTO, I've been to all of that, right? So my third point is this. If, in fact, okay, this is a loss, and we think it's a loss, and you verify it, right, if it's a loss or not, because we think it's a loss, okay, but see if we're correct or not. And leaving, being left behind is worse, we get the lesser evil. That's what they said, is the lesser evil. Again, give us the facts and let's review it, okay? And my last point is this. With all these things that are vague and the burden of proof is in the government, we've not studied it properly. Let's not rush, all right? And I will tell you as an experienced guy, three thirds of my life is private sector. I set of cement in, ten, in, in six countries, okay? I've been a farmer my whole life and I'm the head of Alianza Agricultura, which is 32 organizations for the last uh, 18 years, right? I know both sides. And my last point, sir, the sloppiness with which you got WTO killed us. Is this sloppy? We don't know. But you know, we should know. Why do we not know? Because they abolished, sir, let me repeat. They abolished the only legally mandated area called the public-private Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fisheries. We used to go there every three months. Now zero, we shut up, shut up on this. Shut up on tariff reductions, which, as you know, is totally silly. That's why when it went to 5%, I gave all the data that at 5%, okay, you don't have to give 5%, you can give 15% the same thing, right? What's sloppy, sloppy? So my last point, sir, is given A, we don't want to be, the, we, we, not, we don't want to be a big mistake and W, no sloppy work, and we got damaged. B, the burden proof is yours to show that our estimate of 30 billion negative, okay, is not true because we've given our proof. So good. Third, if we're to be left behind, fine. We're willing to lose here. If by not joining, we lose more. Prove it with numbers. And fourth, to do this, you got to study it. There's no study. And therefore, we want to study. And since they abolished us for two years, we want that study. Even though they don't exist, we want to go to you. And we want to challenge, right? Because maybe we're wrong, then we'll accept. If we're right, then let's do it right, okay? But let me tell you, I'm a realist, okay? If, we, if it is the lesser evil, that will be left behind and you prove it then let us suffer again because if not joining it it will worse we will join it but the burden of proof is with you and i'm just saying this what i saw in wto correct okay is something that i might be seeing now which is sloppy work and the reason i say that is because we've never got the chance to look at this thing and you've never got a chance to see if we're right or wrong we gotta talk we can't just decide this it is sloppy work so sir as you know i'm a follower of your entire family of everything nationalist and what i don't like okay is incompetence incompetence because of sloppy work and agriculture is treated sloppily as i said safeguard cement i did that i want that okay i want safeguards of cement safeguards rights right, they don't even look at it we can win that better they didn't look at it we are cheating like second class citizens i stand today as the chair of alianza agricultura i stand today as a coordinator of five coalitions composed of agribusiness farmers science and academia women and uh, all kinds of things and i stand today sir please postpone it and call a meeting just one day four hours one day saturday and let's look at it and if you prove us wrong fine but we don't even know your site for god's sake you don't even know our site i've been asking these people what i'm talking this is terrible so in fairness to you sir you're a champion of democracy i know that you fought for it let us have democracy in this case we're coming here with a railroad thing and we reject it but if we're wrong right We'll accept it and feel correct, but the alternative going behind is proven to be worse, then we will accept the pain because you have to choose the lesser evil. Because, sir, you must understand, I'm a results guy. I'm not some kind of idealist. And I know industry and agriculture left and right. And I've been in international trade for many years as a senior undersecretary of DTI, undersecretary of DA, and as the secretary of all the French presidential flagship programs. So thank you, sir.
Thank you for that, Under Secretary, uh, former Under Secretary Ordonez. Uh, during the last hearing, some studies or projections were presented. Maybe we can give uh, Comsec, we can give Under Secretary Ordonez and Secretary Montemayor copies of what were presented last hearing. For also a critique on whether or not uh, the studies are uh, already sufficient to to prove to prove the the thesis statements uh, contained in the said studies or projections. Sir, I know all about these studies, but there's never been a sit down discussion. This is my problem. No government gives us studies; they think you can write one page and do it. There's got to be a discussion. You cannot give a study so you can't. That's it. No, this is too important for people. I want a four-hour meeting, a four-hour meeting face-to-face -face because these studies, I know these studies, I've already talked to both sides, no? They're not seeing it eye to eye and there is no discussion. You can't do it through paper. It's got to be discussion. Sir, that's my plea. Of course, you can reject it. You're the boss. But I plead for the purpose of our people. Let's have a four-hour discussion, deep discussion, deep discussion, sir. Outside, Saturday, maybe, you know, 8 to 12, okay. your top people are top people, not 500 people. Just maybe four from our side and four from your side. And let's talk about it. Then you'll know the truth. We don't know the truth, right? Yeah. We don't know the truth. Yes, the, the, the committee can uh, host that, can arrange for that. Uh, okay. Thank you, Maganda. sir. We would be most grateful, sir. Most Maganda grateful. You. Uh, we will study it with the, with the ComSec, how, how, to, how to do it. Uh, so one hour is not one hour, uh, four hours. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one afternoon, one afternoon. Okay, any other NGOs uh, or personalities present, Comsec? Sir, we have Mr. Raul Montemayor. Maybe he would also like to make a presentation. What's the group of Mr. M Raul Montemayor? Sir, sir, he is from the Federation of Free Farmers. Ah, kasama rin siya ni, ni Secretary. Secretary, Yoy. yes, sir. Opa. Sige. Opa. Ah, sige, Raul, to, 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 oh. or to, to add to what the uh, Secretary already told us. Sige. Yes, uh, magandang hapon po, uh, Mr. Senator. And uh, just to summarize also the contents of the letter that we sent you earlier. So kami rin po ay nagtutulak na i-defer muna natin yung concurrence ng RCEP. Apat na main points. Uno, una, wala po kayong consultation. Wala kaming alam kung ano na yung final na kinumit sa gobyerno sa RCEP. Pangalawa, wala tayong maliwanag na assessment sa ating experience sa mga nakaraang trade agreements. No? Uh, I would like to ask the PIDS and the economists, what is your batting average with respect to your pro projections before on the benefits of GATT, Uruguay Round, and the other FTAs? Have they come true? No? And, and your, your rosy projections now about RCEP, if, if your projections before did not come true, how, how accurate are you now? now? And it's, uh, I, I, I see it's not very balanced. It's all the good side now. At wala yung mga risks and challenges that we have to face now. And pangatlo po, maliban sa baka faulty yung mga assessment natin, wala pala, wala ho tayong programa within the DA and other government agencies to help the private sector take advantage of the trade opportunities from the trade agreement. So I will show you later. Ang ganda-ganda ng picture ng trade, trade agreements, pero we don't benefit. It is the other countries who benefit at our expense. And then finally, wala rin maliwanag na assessment kung ano magiging impact ng RCEP sa agriculture sector. So let me just go through swiftly through these four arguments. Yun na nga, nabanggit na, nakakalungkot na, na si Secretary Dar, ako po niya sa opisina niya noong 2019, for one year, the, the existing committees of PICAF did not meet. Uh, and then when they were finally reorganized, tinanggal naman yung mga uh, committees that handle mga cross-cutting issues like international trade and climate change. Hindi po namin alam kung bakit. No? So for or RCEP starting 2019, absolutely no consultation po ang nangyari. No? At uh, hindi naman to oversight eh, kasi ganun ang ginawa nila sa ibang committees. At marami sila mga decision within, within DA ngayon na itinutulak nila na wala po talagang consultation with the private stakeholders. No? Number two, yun na nga. Ano ba nangyari dun sa mga 
previous trade agreements and in yung mga projections ng mga economists na nagtulak sa mga trade agreements nito, nagkatotoo ba no? with respect to agriculture? And I don't think it is it, it is uh, it really happened no? that they were accurate. No? Unang una, if you see, look at agricultural imports, uh, ito yung breakdown ng top 10 agricultural imports. And this coming, by the way, from the Senate, yung, yung office nyo. Up from, from the 2000 up to now, yan pa rin po yung main exports natin. Coconut, banana, pineapple, tuna. A little bit of tobacco. Makikita nyo yung mga iba, siguro may mga lumaki din, but they are less than 1% of total export. So, ibig sabihin, nabuksan ng trade agreements yung export opportunities natin. Hindi naman lumago yung ating export opportunities. We never expanded beyond our traditional commodities. No? Secondly, we have increasing imports. No? And you will look at the second table. In 2000, in 1995, we joined that WTO. Uh, WTO. Meron ng konting pula dyan na deficit. And you will see as time progress, palaki ng palaki po yung agri-deficit. So what's happening? No? Uh, where, where are all the rosy projections about our exports? That we will have more exports and better uh, trade balances. Mukhang hindi naman nagkatotoo. No? And maliban dyan, natatalo tayo sa ating mga kakompetensya. No? Yung mga export opportunities na binuksan ng mga trade agreements, ang nakinabang yung kalaban natin, tayo nagtulog-tulog. Kaya sila ay yung, yung you just go to supermarkets like SNR or Landers or whatever. You see Thai products, Vietnamese products, yung produkto ng Pilipinas, suka lang. No? Uh, makapuno pero hinaluan ng yung at talo tayo sa, sa mga export products. No? At Maliban doon, nakakapasok ngayon yung mga murang imported products na nakapapagbaba ng presyo ng ating mga presyo. No? And sabi ko nga, walang effective program to help our stakeholders. No? After the trade agreement is ratified, wala na. Bahala na kayo mga producers and exporters na gumawa ng para na makapag-export kayo. No? I, there was a one study before that said na most of our exports or a large part of our agri exports do not avail of the preferential tariffs under the trade agreements. They export out quota, out, outside the agreement. Why? Nahihirapan po sila kumuha ng mga certificate of origin. Pinapahirapan sila sa paglapapaluas ng mga produkto nila. Napakamahal yung mga sanitary and final sanitary uh, standards na walang tulong ang gobyerno. Para sa, ang dami pong problema na through the trade agreements open up markets for us but we cannot take advantage of them because of many problems. So sinasabi ni, ni Ernie, he was very kind to just say it's sloppy. It's, it's pathetic no? yung nagkayari po sa ating agriculture. And yun na nga, yung RCEP, walang binabasa ko yung pinapinggan ko kanina yung hearing Panay rosy picture yung pinapalabas nila. And, you know, uh, groups like PIDS, no? they, they are government agencies. No? They are the primary think tank of government. They use taxpayers' money. They are supposed to present the balanced picture to the senators so that you can make informed decisions. It's a one-sided. Lang, no? uh, you, you say, well, if we do this, this is what happened. If we do not do this, this is what will happen. Sana ganun po. Yun yung responsibility ng government think tank. Hindi yung parang magiging propagandist ng, ng RCEP without saying or showing the big picture. No? Uh, yun nga, walang-walang discussion about risks and threats. No? And uh, sinasabi na makakaroon ng trade investments dahil sa RCEP. No? Maybe, no? pero you look at foreign, foreign investors, they have a choice. No? Hindi lang naman Pilipinas ang pwede nilang pagtayuan ng negosyo nila. They can always put up shop in other RCEP countries where the cost of doing business is cheaper, walang masyadong crime, maganda yung facilities. No? So, hindi po automatic na sa atin sila pupunta. Uh, in fact, with the situation now, 
And I, I read there has been some exodus na nga of investors from the Philippines to other countries. No? So wala pong guarantee na mangyayari yun. And I hope, I would have thought that the, uh, the think tanks, the economies would have shown what will happen if this happens. No? Uh, so that we can prepare if we really want to join RCEP. Malam natin saan tayo mahina at doon tayo tututok ng ating mga intervention. Pero right now, parang everything's good. No? Let's join. Let's not uh, be left para be left behind because uh, nandiyan na yung mga benefits na naghihintay sa atin. No? So ito nga ngayong just last uh, chair, Mr. Chair. Ito nga yung warning nila na siguro pag naubusan na sila ng argumento, sasabihin nila, we cannot afford to be left behind. No? And this reminds me of an anecdote of your friend, si Senator Pacquiao. No? Ini-interview siya noon eh. Pabalik siya ng Manila, panalo sa subuksi. Tinatanong siya, pag, kung sakali isa na lang yung upuan sa eroplano, iiwanan mo ba si Boboy Fernandez? No? Alam niyo yung sagot niya, hindi niya sinabing yes or no. Sabi niya, I will wait for the next flight na meron dalawang seats available. No? Very practical uh, answer. No? And, uh, and I think that is the same attitude that we should have with, with respect to ours. Eh? No? Hindi po tayo maiwanan ng bus dahil Maiiwan naman yung mga FTAs natin with the uh, RCEP member countries. Uh, nandun pa rin yung mga tariff concessions nila. At nandun pa rin yung mga opportunities pa sa atin that will remain in place. No? And uh, uh, in, fact, uh, for, for, in, uh, in a certain way, it's a better arrangement for us. Because whatever we concede, for example, to, let's say, to Korea, only Korea will benefit. But if we give that concession under RCEF, all countries within RCEF will take advantage of that concession. So, kung gusto natin magdahan-dahan at protektahan yung ibang industries natin, we can go selective in our FTA. And this is precisely why uh, Korea uh, accomplished a separate FTA with us. Even though they are already in our Kasi yung gusto nila ibigay nila sa Pilipinas, ayaw nilang ibigay sa ibang receptor po siya. And uh, of course, if we defer, we will have more time to prepare. No? There's nothing wrong with that. No? Uh, and by the time that we are ready to join, we will be more prepared. Yes, yes. as for more than concessions. Uh, but by the time that we are ready to join, I suppose we will do more. We will so, salamat po yung po ang po yung po ang. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, so I think we've given sufficient time to the non-governmental organizations. Komsek, tama ba yan? Wala, wala naman tayong nakaligtaan. Sir, we just have one more po. Ah, meron pa. Okay. Yes, sir. But before that, sir, may I just acknowledge the presence of. Woman Health Representative, Ms. Ana Maria Nemenzo. For the last one, sir, we have Attorney Golda Benjamin from the, uh, he, she is a professor of law from the Siliman University. She is also with our NGOs po. Ma'am Golda. Ah, sige. Golda, what is your organization? Right now, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Right now, I'm with Siliman University. Okay, so it's with the university. Ah, sige. Give us uh, the, ano, the... An objective analysis of your school. All right, I'm, I'm and I'm uh, speaking today, Mr. Chair. Um, also, uh, based on my experience with engaging in concurrent hearings for the Japan-Philippines Economic Partnership Agreement. So, uh, thank you for opening this up for public hearings, and we're hoping that there will be more uh, in the future, so that we really will know what concessions we've given. So, I'd like to limit my interventions today into six points. Uh, very brief six points and would reserve uh, the right to submit a more comprehensive memorandum. So number one, um, I agree with an earlier speaker who raised concerns about the almost invisibility of protection to labor and human rights in the RCEP. If we look at the whole landscape of trade and investment agreements now entered into by other countries, especially when they're entering um, into agreements, for example, with countries like China and Australia with their own uh, very peculiar sets of uh, human rights allegations that they're quite careful in providing enforceable uh, provisions to protect labor and human rights. So I would like the Senate to carefully look at this 
these provisions, especially now that countries like the European Union are advancing in their laws, for example, on due diligence. And the United States, for example, is using their import, import bans to control, for example, products uh, out of forced labor. So let's not do a backslide and uh, follow what is the more progressive uh, and progressive use of trade agreements to advance these rights. Um, the second, I'd like to focus on the investment chapter and the reservations we've made as a country because um, this trade agreement is very similar to the Japan-Philippines agreement where it will apply both to measures by the national government but also by local government units, including our autonomous regions. So in the prohibition of performance requirements, there is a prohibition against requiring our partners to have a certain to achieve a certain level of domestic content in their uh, manufacturing, for example, and other operations in this country. And we have a few laws that I did not see to be pointed out in the reservation annex. Um, that provides for domestic content requirements. I think, for example, on our sin taxes law, there's a domestic requirement provision there, and that was not reserved. So we also put ourselves in, in legal risk. Uh, and if you want also domestic content regulations to, for example, support our farmers or to support our local producers in the future, then we lose the space to do that because um, we have not reserved it in the annexes to the investment chapter. Uh, the next one is very, very, very relevant to our COVID response, and that is the prohibition against the requirement of requiring uh, our partners in this agreement to, for example, transfer particular technology. So I'll give an example um, in terms of the technology related to vaccine production. So there's a global call for vaccine producing countries to allow local producers to reproduce the, va uh, the vaccine so that the rollout will be faster. But of course, a lot of, of these companies are resisting because they're very protective of their manufacturing and propriety uh, rights and also their intellectual property rights. So in terms of policy setting, I'd also like to encourage and urge the Senate to look at the impact of that provision to this global call as well. Um, of course, there's also the prohibition against preference of goods. So I see a lot, for example, in local government units where um, there are local uh, councils that are trying to, to uh, try and have a, a preference of local goods. And please look at that as well, because in other countries, um, some of the investors are, are already starting to question these kinds of local legislation. Um, and then I'm looking at the last two, and this is just on constitutionality. I'm raising a concern because on the reservations for land, water, and natural resources, of course, in our constitution, like in land, it's very clear, it's ownership. But in our articulation of our reservation on land, um, in one of in the investment annex, the language that we use was simply on um, it's full control and supervision. So there seems to be an opening prior to the amendment of our constitution. So this, this also worries me, and I, I don't know the policy behind it. Perhaps it's just retaining flexibility, but I urge the Senate to, to look at the language carefully. And finally, on the language of public utilities, so we know that in the constitution, it's granted to citizens with a few of the uh, modifications in created by jurisprudence, but again, in our um, annex reservations, it's also just a reservation of the right to adopt and maintain measures for as long as these are, uh, these do not amount to unjustifiable discrimination of foreign investment, then it's okay. So it's a little bit different from the ownership protection in the constitution on, on these three sectors versus what is being reserved in um, our annex in, in the Philippines. And, and, and finally, just also want to raise the concern and, and to, to remind everyone again that in all studies, World Bank, ADB, UNCTAD, uh, trade agreements are not the drivers for the increase of foreign direct investment, and neither are they drivers for increased market access. There are other reasons like business efficiency. So I feel that, and I join uh, my uh, some of my uh, longtime friends here and also uh, experts in government, former and, and current, to exercise a bit of restraint. Um, 
in really trying to understand what we're giving up and re what we're going to earn. Um, I respect economic projections of trade treaties, but we also have to be very conscious of historical repercussions as in the past. And thank you for the opportunity, Mr. Chair, and I'd be happy to send a more comprehensive technical memorandum to your committee. Thank you. Uh, the committee shall await your uh, memorandum. Uh, Attorney Golda, Benjamin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you ma'am. Uh, Ah, uh, okay, ayan si DTI uh, Assistant Secretary Alan Hepti. Uh, Alan, uh, everything about the RCEP, like the all the uh, terms of the treaty, all of the annexes to the treaty, are this already available to the public uh, via, via some uh, internet website? Yes or no? Yes, uh, Your Honor. Uh, there is a website. Everything that, 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 we, everything that we need to know about the treaty, it's already there in the public. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so, the website is rsec, uh, sec, uh, dot org. R C E P S E C dot org. So the okay, that means that means, uh, that means that the uh, senators, this committee. Uh, we'll be studying uh, the, the terms of the treaty plus all of our annexes, our reservations, negative list, positive list, may mga ganon, di ba, uh, Alan? And uh, yes, all the, all the uh, oppositors are also examining the same, the same uh, words, the same documents. Okay, yes, so, uh, so that's very good. Okay, so now... Uh, are you ready to uh, no? are you ready to respond the uh, alan to to the points raised uh, last october 29 and today okay lang kung hindi ka pa ganun ka ready because i think so, there were some yes. submissions eh, merong, there are some position papers just brought to my attention now so uh, pati ako hindi ko pa po nababasa yung iba uh, so yes. alan uh, uh, to what okay. points can you can you respond okay uh, thank you your honor for giving the floor and uh, again, uh, maraming salamat po to our colleagues uh, from the private sector and also from the government. I just want to briefly reply to some of the points uh, raised by our uh, partners from the private sector, particularly from the non-government organizations. And actually, uh, Your Honor, we would like to extend our utmost gratitude to them because uh, most of these insights that we heard this afternoon we heard this also in the course of our consultations conducted. That's why in the crafting of our position, we have duly considered all these points. Thus, uh, just to give context on the discussion, uh, Your Honor, on the various points raised, I just want to stress first at the outset that the Philippines has already embraced an open market policy when it comes to trade and investment. And when we have seen that, to the WTO agreement 1994, we have embraced non-discrimination principle, clarification principles, and the rules-based systems that promotes open, free, and fair trade and investment. And this is a multilateral agreement. And I do understand the concerns raised by our colleagues on this uh, particular WTO agreement that we have mentioned. But I just want to stress that when we embrace these principles, the same had already been sustained by the Supreme Court in the case of Tanyata versus Amgara. And the various provisions of the constitutions, particularly those constitutional provisions that apparently provides preference to domestic labor and enterprises have been duly addressed in that particular decision. After WTO agreement, Philippines has entered into several free trade agreements. And I think everyone is well aware that we are part of ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. And under ASEAN umbrella, we have several free trade agreements. And these free trade agreements cover goods, services, and investment. And as a matter of fact, when you talk about tariff liberalization and the aspect of goods in ASEAN alone, we have already liberalized our tariff lines to as high as 99%. We have reserved those sensitive products as far as tarification is concerned. In addition to this regional agreement, Philippines has also entered into bilateral agreement. 
One is the Philippine-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement. And the latest one was the Philippine EFTA Free Trade Agreement. Now, why I'm saying this, Your Honor and colleagues? The reason is that in all these free trade agreements that we have entered into, basically, we have already, again, entrenched in our trade policy an open market for trade and investment. So in other words, tariff liberalization has been uh, implemented and the rules-based system has also been adopted in our trade policy. Now, when it comes to opening the market under RCEP, we have to bear in mind that RCEP basically is just an integration and consolidation of ASEAN plus one FTAs. And what are these ASEAN plus one FTAs? Ito po yung ASEAN China, ASEAN Japan, meron din tayong ASEAN Korea, at meron tayong Australia New Zealand FTA. So dito sa RCEP, if you will analyze, there are 15 uh, participating countries. Yung sampung ASEAN member states, and then yung lima, ASEAN free trade partners, yung China, Japan, Korea, and Australia, and New Zealand. Now, given that we have existing FTAs already, which is a regional uh, in nature, that is ASEAN plus one, with these uh, five AFEs, so ano ngayon yung value ng RCEP? Well, I'll just summarize the value of RCEP. Number one is that in all these FTAs that we have entered into, Marami mo tayo mga rules dyan no? na inadapt at ini-implement. So yung RCEP basically, sinisimplify niya itong mga rules nito. So that the purpose is that our stakeholders will not have the difficulty of using one agreement whenever they would like to access a particular market or country for that matter. So kung halimbawa mag -e export sa Japan, pupunta sa ASEAN Japan, or maybe sa Philippine Japan Economic Partnership Agreement. So sa Korea, ganun din ang gagawin niya. Sa RCEP, we tried to consolidate and simplify these rules para yung stakeholders natin, pag nag-trade sila, they will just refer to one FTA, and that is the RCEP agreement. Number two, another value add dito po sa RCEP is that given na na-open na natin yung market, na-liberalize na natin yung mga tariff lines natin on certain agricultural products and industrial products, Dito sa RCEP po, nagkaroon ng incremental, no, additional enhanced market access. So yung mga produkto na hindi natin na-liberalize doon sa mga ASEAN Plus 1 FTAs, liberalize nila. So in other words, ito yung consideration no, ng mga RCEP participating countries. Now question, may mga instances ba na mas better yung ASEAN Plus 1 FTA? The answer is yes. Tama po yun. Kasi po, uh, may mga sensitive product na ayaw mo ibigay o i-open sa RCEP kasi gusto mo lang ibigay to one particular country. And if you will note, one policy po sa ASEAN na ini-embrace po natin is that yung ASEAN consensus natin, no? yung ASEAN way, na pagbiligay mo sa isang ASEAN member state, dapat ibigay mo sa lahat. So that's why yung mga ASEAN free trade partners, very calculated din po ang mga offers nila kasi nga because of that, uh, because of the principle ano, or practice that we are doing. Now, that's why doon sa mga instances ng mga bilateral FTA natin, magagamit pa rin po yun at magpo-coexist kasi kung yung sensitive products na yun ay hindi pwede ibigay sa RCEP, then doon sa bilateral, pwede po natin makuha. So, lalong-lalo na po sa agricultural products. No? Pag pinag-usapan natin, halimbawa, ang isang produkto like tropical fruit, like bananas, mangoes, pineapples, etc., you would expect na may mga ASEAN free trade partners na highly sensitive on that and they would just open their market on those uh, agricultural products under RCEP. That's why the preference po is to what? To resort to a bilateral FTA. Pangatlo po ang value add dito sa RCEP is that noting that there is an emerging issues and also subject matters when it comes to conducting trade and investment. Dito po, sinako po natin yung mga yon. And what are these subject matters or trade na kinover natin sa RCEP? Maybe I would highlight po e-commerce in particular. Because uh, the trend right now, because of the advancement of technology, economic activities have been further intensified online. And it is important that in conducting economic activities online, there has to be a clear rules of the game. How do you conduct trade? How do you transact via online? So what are the rules? 
Should the rules be just be limited in the Philippines? Of course not. Kasi nga po, it cuts across border. So, importante po na within the region, meron po tayong rules pa paano gumalaw yung mga traders natin and mga consumers. And then, of course, dahil dito po, atirin na din po natin yung mga subject matters na very important no, in the conduct of trade and investment. Not only yung conventional way, but also yung sa online transaction. That way, sa RSF, makikita nyo mas uh, comprehensive yung chapter on intellectual property. So, yung protection ng various kinds of intellectual property rights have been covered, including po no, yung mga issues and concerns si enforcement, lalo na po sa digital environment. Now, another important value at sa RSF is the inclusion of the chapter on competition. This is a very important chapter. Why? Ano ba yung purpose po ng competition? Ang purpose ng competition is magkaroon tayo ng fair environment when it comes to doing business. And the are they taking of the RCEP participating countries in this agreement are, number one, to adapt and implement competition laws and policies in the respective jurisdiction, consistent, of course, with the RCEP agreement. And number two, dapat, they have to establish competition authorities. Ito po yung Philippine Competition Commission kung sa ating uh, jurisdiction ng pag-uusapan. So yung ibang countries, lalo na yung mga least developed countries, no, na wala pang Philippine Competition Commission or Competition Authority, they are required to adopt and implement laws and establish these uh, offices. And what's the effect of having these competition policies? It will guarantee that whenever Filipino stakeholders or businesses will go to these economies or countries, they would expect a level playing field. So, patas po yung trato. So, in this po, uh, ito po yung, ano, ano, yung naging value add ng asset. Now, the third issue po is yung mga sensitive areas na nabanggit ng ating mga partners po from the private sector and NGO. Nabanggit po yung agricultural products, Lalo na for the Philippines, nabanggit din po yung issue on labor, nabanggit din po yung issue on environment, nabanggit din po yung issue dun sa UPO, no sa plant variety, and also yung issue dun sa PPR, Prohibition on Performance Requirement. Okay. Well, I'll answer po those uh, sensitive areas that were raised. One on the matter of agricultural products. As I have presented po last uh, October 29, we made sure po that highly sensitive agricultural products have been excluded from our tariff commitments in RCEP. So ano po yung halimbawa ng mga agri products po no, na in-exclude natin dito sa RCEP? Unang-una po yung swine meat, yung edible opal, o bovine animals, swine sheep, goats, oilsets, etc. Poultry milk, potatoes, fresh or chilled, onion, shallots, garlic mix, Cabbages, cauliflowers, carrots po, nabanggit po kanina, lettuce, cassava, sweet potatoes, coffee, maize, rice, cereal goat. Marami po ito, we can provide the list. But we have exploded these highly sensitive agricultural products. Sa industrial goods, ganun din po. Yung mga sensitive products like cement, flat hole products, iron, among others, we have excluded them. So I hope that our stakeholders are, of course, um, mindful of this because, again, as I mentioned earlier, ito po yung resulta ng consultation namin sa kanila. In the course of the long years of negotiation, no, almost eight years. Second issue po is on the aspect of labor. Well, they are correct po, nasa RSEP po talaga, wala hong provision, wala hong chapter on labor standards and labor rights. And maybe, to give context, you have to understand that in this RCEP agreement, there are 15 countries. And levels of economic development, even legal development on that matter, varies. So, meron tayong developed countries, meron tayong developing countries, may least developed countries. At kapag pinag-usapan yung mga labor standards, mga labor rights, sa ibang countries, no, that are not maybe well enlightened about the repercussions of this or the value of this or maybe the sensitivities of linking this with uh, market access for that matter, medyo sensitive po sila. That's why wala po ito sa RCEP agreement. And of course, kung wala talagang consensus, you can arrive no, on the agreement. But for the Philippines, we just want to highlight po that we are very mindful of labor standard, labor rights. In fact, palagi nga po namin sinasabi sa mga stakeholders namin, 
sa EU GSP Plus no, na preferential arrangement natin, even sa US GSP, sanay na po tayo no, na i-monitor at tingnan, examine kung compliant tayo sa various international labor court conventions. Now, notwithstanding po na wala pong labor provision no, or chapters dito sa RCEP agreement, one important consideration po na maybe our uh, partners from the NGO should take into account is that karamihan naman po ng RCEP participating countries ay signatories, if not parties, to the court conventions on labor. Katulad po ng Convention on Freedom of Association and Protection of the Right to Organize Convention, Right to Organize and Collective Bargaining Convention, Forced Labor Convention, Abolition of Forced Labor Convention, Minimum Age Convention, Worst Forms of Child Labor Convention, Equal Remuneration Convention, and Discrimination no, of Employment and Occupation Convention. We're in Philippines, no, are part of this above eight fundamental ILO convention. So, yan po, no? And in fact, just for the information na rin po of the body, ngayon po, marami po kayong mga FTA na nire-review and baka malamang po may mga bago rin FTA po kaming in-negotiate. So, ito po yung mga issues na lumalabas. But one another important consideration din po is that sa RCEP, meron po tayong committee dyan, ng Committee on Sustainable Growth. And one of the functions by which Committee on Sustainable Growth can work on will be yung emerging issues. So ano ba itong emerging issues? Then labor could be one. No? Environment could be one. So I hope they have to factor in in their analysis. Third sensitive area po na nabanggit is on environment. Uh, they are correct po. Wala po tayong chapter on environment. Wala po tayong provisions on environment. But maybe one important uh, Article there in RCEP agreement is the affirmation no, of the parties doon sa CBD, so Convention on Biodiversity. So we just uh, incorporated the same and affirm our commitments in that international agreement. In any case po, isa pang importante na dapat tingnan ho natin is that Article 20 of GATT 1994 is incorporated no, in RCEP agreement. And under Article 20, paragraph G, you will note that there is a measure there for purposes of uh, conserving no, your more exhaustible natural resources wherein the party has the flexibility to adopt measure. And of course, if isasama mo pa rito yung mga exceptions, mga general exceptions, security exceptions, then these are flexibilities and policy space that we can avail of. Do naman po sa concern ng UPOP, uh, wag mo kayong mag-alala, wala akong undertaking dito to accede on UPOP. Okay. Ang napag-usapan lang is that magkaroon ng isang sistema or sui generis kind of uh, protecting new plant varieties. So as simple as that. So in the Philippines po, wala ho tayong problema doon kasi meron na ho tayong uh, plant variety protection. No? May patas na po tayo on that. Also, uh, nabanggit din po yung isang concern dito sa prohibition on performance requirement. Well, uh, that is one of the disciplines included in the chapter on investment. But again, we have to bear in mind that notwithstanding that this is one of the disciplines incorporated of the investment, it, ibig sabihin ay talina agad tayo doon. Because in the agreement, marami hong ways by which you can exercise flexibilities. And if I will call the attention to the body, for example, sa entry number 14, no, doon sa investment natin, meron po tayong reservations doon on PPR that would cover technology transfer, production process, and proprietary knowledge. This is in addition po doon sa reservation na ginawa natin sa entry number 15 na basically halos all services sectors no, na may commercial presence, nagkaroon po tayo ng reservations doon not just on PPR but we included national treatment, most favored nation, and uh, SMDT or senior management and board of directors. And again po, yung reservation na to extends to a lot of areas. And then yung e-commerce, technology transfer, royalties, production, essential security, uh, those uh, not technically feasible uh, areas of investment, exploration of natural resources, areas of investment that may be determined by NEDA from time to time because this is under the constitution. LGUs, no, flexibilities, our ARMM. No, our indigenous people no, and cultural communities, no, may reservations so tayo dyan. 
privatization, steel, uh, pioneering activities, forest grazing, manufacturing, mining, quarrying, among others. So doon po sa NCMs natin, meron din daw tayong listing doon ng mga non-conforming measures which are present under our existing regime. So those are the items po, no? doon sa sensitive uh, areas. Now, another area po is that meron po ba tayong ano, uh, safety nets? No? May safety nets ba? Kasi ito po yung mga concerns na narinig po natin. Walami po tayong flexibilities and policy space po under our separate agreement. Number one, under Article 17.12, we have the general exception. And basically, the general exceptions adopted Article 20 of the GATT 1994. We have also Article 17.13, which is security exceptions. So dito sa security exceptions, no, if you will read the same, no, self-judging for your determination pagdating dun sa adoption of measures which are considered to be essential no, to the security interest of the RCEP participating countries. Meron tayong taxation measures under Article 17.14. Meron tayong Article 17.15 with measures to safeguard the balance of payment. Now, in other specific chapters po, meron din po tayong mga flexibilities of policy space, lalo na po sa e-commerce. And basically, ang reservations po natin dito is with respect to the adoption and implementation of measures which we deem are essential to the essential security interests of the country or legitimate public policy objectives. This is with respect to location of computing facilities cross-border. Sa investment po, meron din nyo tayong denial of benefits there. So kung merong circumvention, like halimbawa, anti-dummy law, then we can deny benefits or we terminate it or we cease our uh, diplomatic relations, then we can also deny benefits. We also incorporated an investment, security exceptions, and that we have to take note here that we have also uh, expanded the same no? to include uh, measures which are necessary for the fulfillment of obligations with respect to the maintenance or restoration of international peace or security or the protection of its own essential security interest. So, marami ho tayong ano, uh, mga flexibilities. At kung sa public health naman po ang pag-uusapan, meron din ho tayo ng uh, provisions. No? Sa, because uh, trips and public health, yung sa Doha Declaration, we have incorporated the same in the RCEP agreement. Now, on the issue po, of consultation because uh, this was raised so kanina earlier. No? Uh, we just want to inform the body po that conducting consultations with stakeholders, both private and public sectors, is a must in any trade negotiation. Because in the crafting of our position, mahirap po mag-position or mag-take ng isang side na hindi mo alam kung ano yung gusto ng ating stakeholders. And in the course of the negotiation po, napakarami ho namin consultations na ginawa, both domestic and regional. So based on our latest count na lang po, no, sa domestic consultations, we have conducted at least 19 consultations. Sa regional le level po, ay nagkaroon kami ng 14 consultations. And I just want to highlight po, conduct, uh, consultations conducted sa agriculture, no? particularly spearheaded by the Department of Agriculture. Meron po silang consultation conducted as early as November 2015, may March 2016, March 15, 2016, may June 2017, July 2018, April 2018, May 2019, July 2019. This is an addition to the public hearing po po conducted by the Tariff Commission because under the CMPA, uh, the Tariff Commission is of course mandated to conduct public hearing. And these are all documented, uh, Your Honor. Uh, for Tariq Commission, there was uh, one scheduled last May 2015. And of course, the DTI level po, napakarami po namin engagement no? uh, with our stakeholders. And even our civil society organizations no? who are present here today, we have been very uh, active in engaging with them. And to be honest po, uh, we are very thankful with the insights no? na sinare po nila. And if you will peruse for the RCEP agreement, most of these uh, insights that they have shared to us, we have uh, carried the same and we fought for it in the negotiation. That's why po, yan ay hindi napasama. So, yun po sa consultation. And maybe on programs po, uh, napakarami ho, Mr. Chair, no, to enumerate. I enumerated uh, these programs during my last presentation. 
ano po yung ginagawa ng PTI and other government agencies. Si DA po, napakarami din yung programs and uh, I know they are represented here. They can expound on that. But maybe just to highlight po, movement, no? When it comes to our uh, trade, no? Uh, lalo na po sa manufacturing sector. Hinighlight ko po yun last, uh, last week, no? Na starting 2015, nakita nyo naman yung start improvement no, ng manufacturing sector. So that means na maraming production and manufacturing activities are happening in the country. And prior to the pandemic, ang average growth rate po ng manufacturing sector ay 6%. At may mga subsector po, hitting two digits, no? 11%, sometimes 18%. So this momentum, we want to sustain po. Kaya I hope po that uh, our colleagues no, should uh, take note of the same. Uh, kami po sa DPI, open po kami, katulad po ng sabi ni Yusek Ordonez, no, if they really want to uh, engage with us, uh, scrutinize ito, uh, we're willing to sit down with them if they want to. We're just uh, ano po, a text away po. They can always uh, communicate with us. Maraming salamat po, Chair, and I hope I was able to cover all those issues. So, meron po ako na miss, uh, just uh, remind me. Thank you po. Uh, as a question lang uh, from, from the chairman. Uh, you mentioned the highly sensitive agri products have been excluded from our RCEP commitments. The same with some sensitive industrial goods, di ba? Oh, all, of this, all, of, all of these listed items available to the public? Yes po. Uh, in fact, okay. in my presentation po, uh, Your Honor, uh, I included that in one of my slides. So yes, this can be a copy of my slide. Exhaustive yes, okay. na slide mo or meron ka pang internet resource? Basta, basta, basta okay. available to the public for those who want to check and double check. Yes Tama? po. Yes, po. Uh, if they want yung may specific tariff lines, we can provide that. We can provide that po. Oh, gawa tayo, na, gawa tayo ng ganon so that ma... Yes, so, kasi yes, I think the agreement uh, relies heavily on this ano ba, harmonized system by yung HS. Ano bang meaning ng no HS doon? Uh, yes, po. harmonized system po sa tariff classification. Ar yes, uh, yes, harmonized system of the tariff classification. So, lagay na natin kung kaya. Okay, uh, meron kang binanggit na, yung maganda yung binanggit mo, that the public consultations, di ba? And these are all recorded, sabi mo. Okay, who among the government agencies conducted public consultations in relation to RCEP? So, DTI, Tariff Commission, and which other agencies? Uh, DTI, DA, Tariff Commission. DA. Okay, tatlo. And of course, yung iba po namang mga government agencies, they would conduct their own consultation depending po sa areas nila. So, halimbawa, kung meron tayong chapter on intellectual property, it's right. possible okay. that IP would conduct consultation. Okay. Pero yes. sa Board of Investment, meron din ho sila doon. So, yung, yun po. Yung lead, yung meron lead agency. Po. Yung lead. Po, meron po. Oh, which, which you listed, di ba? You, 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 have a, you had a slide na merong lead agency. So, ganito na lang. Com, Comsec, maybe we should write, we should write all of these agencies as for a summary or the minutes of the public consultations that they, they held. Para makita natin what were what were the topics uh, covered in their public consultation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so not, not less than three na kaagad yan. Yung, uh, yes, uh, si Raul ba? Raul? Raul, are you calling my uh, attention? Uh, okay. Raul. Lahat yung nabanggit ni Yusek na consultation sa DA were well, during the time when there was still a committee on international trade. Ako po yung chairman doon, kaya alam ko. No? And I remember in our last few meetings, hindi na kompleto yung discussion sa RCEP kasi ang Sige. sabi nila, yung, yung mga sensitive products na i-exclude mo, merong limited percentage of tariff lines lang yan. Hindi pwedeng kung ano yung gusto mo ilagay mo doon. No? So at, at that point in time, wala pang maliwanag ano yung masasama sa sensitive, ano yung hindi masasama. Doon nagtapos yung consultations, no? And uh, from that last meeting, I think he said July 2019, absolutely no more consultations. Okay, okay sir. De uh, definitely, you, you can no longer produce minutes after that date. Okay. Kasi wala, wala meeting. Sige, sige po. Okay po yun. Uh, May I add to that, Mr. Uh, Senator? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Ardon, yes, yes, sir. Sige po. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I was the uh, senior undersecretary of DTI. The understeer of the I was also president secretary. I saw all these guys work, okay, and I was also head of uh, multinational Xerox worldwide. 
Philippines for certain areas. And I was head of UNGTAD. You remember UNGTAD? UNGTAD is important for Asia. I'm vice president for Asia of UNGTAD. Okay? In other words, I know this stuff very well, right? Now, of course, you can look at all the minutes of 2018. That's not relevant. I want the four-hour meeting because if you look at two years ago, it's not relevant. Of course, you can do that. I really need the four-hour meeting. You know, Mr. Gapti, you know me and I know you. You're really, really good, right? But we've never talked about this. I have never attended even once. Who are you inviting? Okay. I'm just saying this, sir. You can do all the work you want. I want you to do that. But I need the four-hour meeting. So harapan na tayo. Tignan natin. You got the best people here. You got Roel Montemayor, who's chairman. And then he was shut up for two years. Why not hear him now? I mean, you can look at all 29, 20, 15. That's not so relevant as today. And we have a thing in front of us you're going to concur. No need to look at all the rest. What is the document now? And one last point, sir. One last point. We're talking of results, okay? Results. I mean, I love DTI. People know that, right? Okay? But what are the results? The trade balance is getting worse. WTO, ang ganang rhetoric, wala naman nangyari. You know what I mean? I don't want deja vu. Another thing will happen. Now, look. I told us we're humble. We know we make mistakes. But I need that farm meeting. All that talk of the last minute is fine. You can do all you want, right? But the fact is there is a document. There are questions on the document by the leaders of the people you consulted and did not consult. You can call them. There's about five, the matinee. I mean, you have to talk to me now, some of a corn farmer. I mean, he doesn't know this stuff, right? I mean, you consult them, fine. You're talking about corn in Mindanao. You're talking about a, a document that's about to be approved. That thing has words and lines. You got to get the best and get them together. And I want one last thing, sir. I want the Senate to bring the best. I mean, you cannot bring a, an analyst to listen to us. You know, you're supposed to be better than us. We voted for you. You know what I mean? You see a conflict between the two groups. You're supposed to decide. You know, that's my, that's my anger, you know. For example, D, you give a budget, right? You know, 22 billion is unliquidated. What have you done about that? Nothing. I mean, you don't just give it. You see what's wrong. Okay, now, in fairness to DA, they're still waiting for liquidation. God knows up to when. But the Senate's job is not just to give the money. You got to look at the money. Similarly, the Senate's job is not just to hear the consultations and then decide. You got to hear us clearly in four hours. And I want the best. No, You have the best listening to the four best of the private sector and the four best in the government. And you hear us and then you decide. We in the private sector, we have a disadvantage. We are not for the people necessarily. Government's for the people. But we have one advantage they don't have. We know the reality on the ground, okay? We know it. So when you have something like safeguard measures, I want it, sir. I want it for cement. I want it, okay? I want it for rice. They didn't even look at it. Now, that's on the ground. Now, you talk about 8800. They never implemented it. You talk about WTO. They don't do it. You know what I mean? The words are good. What's the reality? And that's what I want the Senate to do. Get into the reality and hear us both. You know, I love it. They're brilliant. But, you know, they have not. <laughs> visited these countries that I visited, correct? They don't know the tricks of the other countries because they're not in the private sector. I know the tricks, but they are no better than us about it. So we must combine, we're all we combine. And I don't want it done by looking at papers. I want it done by talking. Get to Montemayor, he's a freaking expert on this. Get me, I know UNGTAD, I know Asia. I understand, I'm vice president for Asia. Is that clear? UNGTAD. I'm also, and never mind, I'm just saying that gap is better than me in so many areas, but we know a little bit something that he doesn't know. Like, does he know what smuggling really is? He doesn't know. I know there are three cases against me by the smugglers because I went into smuggling. This is what we know that they don't. And what they know, what we don't, are the rules. So we must combine as one Filipino nation. But I don't want to do that without you. I want the Senate to look at that because this is so important to us. And as I said, WTO, all the rhetoric is good. Farmers will get investment. It's all wrong because they did not listen to the farmers who say, you cannot say, liberalize this and it will happen like that. You know what I mean? Even this house. Do you know, sir, the Senate, the House of Representatives unanimously disagreed with the executive? Except that 5%. When you give the data to the Senate, we thank you. You showed that 5% is totally ridiculous because they would move the same way at 15%. By doing 15%, you just saved us 8 billion pesos. Does that's that's the government know that? Did they ever? No, they never did because in fairness to them, they're busy with so many things, right? Okay? But we know it. And the Senate was the arbiter. I beg you, sir, me, sir Chairman, that you get the top person to listen to four from us, four from them, and make a decision. Do not do it through papers. Do not do it through reading, right? Do it through an actual listening to the real people. Consultation is good if you have the right people consulting on the right topic. If it's four years ago, no need. That's irrelevant, right? I mean, you can have 15 consultations. People coming in are not knowledgeable. It's not important. You have one with the best coming, and the best is, I'm a gift. I really respect it. That's what I want. Four hours, sir. Thank you.
Yeah, yes, sir. We, we, as I stated earlier, we will study that uh, uh, proposal. We can make we can make the all the Senate staff uh, present online. Uh, they can listen to the exchanges so that uh, you know they can guide their uh, their principals. Mr. Chairman, may 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 tanong lang po ako. Ah, si Raul, oh, Raul, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Eh, medyo late uh, late hour na kasi tayo dito sa RCEP. Kunyari nag consultation tayo at meron kaming ipapabago. Is there still a chance for us to change our schedule of commitments? Or wala na po? Wala na po, concurrence na lang po tayo ngayon eh. So, uh, what's what's the point of consulting if we cannot change anything? Uh, no, uh, in, in, uh, <laughs> it's the yung yung the four hour the four hour uh, exchange of views uh, proposed by uh, Yusek Ordonez. Ito yung pagkaintindi ko so that uh, you you can in person, you know, present to us the pros and the cons from the point of view of the four the four uh, experts from the private sector and then the government side most likely will present to us the pros and then it's now it's for the consumption of the senate now for for uh, for the ultimate question should we concur or not in the in the RCEP pero yung terms hindi na namin ma, wala na pong no amendment of the terms of the treaty we cannot do that uh, but pagdating sa resolution on concurrence, uh, maybe uh, de depending on the terms of the treaty, yun, uh, maybe some reservations can be allowed. T t tignan po natin yun. We will be guided by the experts from the DFA and the DTI on that particular matter. Pero uh, anyway, uh, I think we need that. Eh. We need that to, to guide to guide precisely the, the Senate on whether to concur with the ratification or not. I mean, yeah, Mr. Ordonez, you want to say something? Nakamute kayo, sir. I, I thank you for that, no? Very wise. Uh, but I want to say this, no? If we concur, no? Uh, then reservations, I like that. Uh, this is my reservation. And finally, this is what I want to beg from government. No? The government says, okay, we'll be weak here, no? And then they close the door. No, if we're weak here, what are the plans? When I went for some same budget, I cannot just say we need it. What are the plans to correct it? For example, we we can some place. And they go away. No, if they're weak, what is the plan to implement it? And a problem natin eh. Magaling sa salita, mahina sa gawa. Pag may problema, huwag mo nasaran. What are the plans? And let us monitor it and hold you, hold you accountable. In other words, trade agreement is not terrific. The, the weak area is fine. Positive out is well, fine. Don't close it. For the negative, what you gonna do? Sabi nga ni Mr. Montabayor, no? Let us see the devil in the detail and take action on the detail. In hindi lang yes or no. May reservations and for the points, may plan. We are tired of this, especially the farmers and in industry. No, farmers are really tired of this, Mr. Chairman. We feel neglected. You know, they do this thing that they shut the door. I mean, can you believe it? They terminated the National Trade Committee. Do you know how serious that is, sir? That's very serious. There is no pit, no complaint from anyone. Right? That's crazy, right? And we come to this, and now there's about 2019 hearings, and they see there's consultation. For God's sake, come on, man. Let's be honest. If you're not consulted for two years, you report that. Voila. And then we know in consultation, you know, old fact. So what am I saying? There is no consultation for the last two years, right? That's what we got to tell them. We cannot, we cannot just say just consultation. It stopped two years ago. And it stopped, there was something. That is the truth. What I'm saying is this, no? I love our government, no? But we have to go deeper than that. And for industry, they're doing well. I mean, I was head of cement for 12 years, right? Farmers, they had those. So that's all, sir. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you for that. Ito kasi, uh, Hi, Mr. DTI, uh, Alan, ito yung, ito yung question, question ko rin kasi ito eh. No? Uh, uh, regarding RCEP, we are just making projections, di ba? That it will uh, benefit us, may mga 0.02% uh, GDP increase, may mga ganyan eh. If, if, correct me if I'm wrong. But we have existing FTAs and we must have data already whether they benefited uh, the Philippines or not, yung existing FTA. So, which is the government agency which can uh, give us the presentation on an on a per FTA basis? Uh, and then what is the measurement? Kasi ang, be, the word benefit kasi is, is subjective. Eh? But uh, what, what, how do we measure benefit? Is it uh, increase in export? Uh, is it transfer of technology? Is it FDI? So, yung ganon. Uh, hindi na sana projection. Can, 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 is, is there a... 
is uh, DTI in, in possession of uh, such studies? Thank you, uh, Your Honor. If uh, we will go into the details as to who availed of and utilized the various FDAs that we have entered into, then uh, you are correct. We have to uh, determine in what aspect are you going to uh, gain this aim. But again, uh, in the course of years of implementation, uh, Your Honor, I think everyone should also be mindful of these many success stories of our micro, small, and medium enterprises who were able not only to access foreign markets, but they were able to access cheaper raw materials and intermediate goods for their respective businesses. Marami po kami mga success stories on that, uh, Your Honor. And uh, we can provide you some of these companies. Some of them have been featured in uh, some presentations and even write-ups. So ito po mga success stories. Ngayon po, siguro may suggestion, uh, Your Honor, is that uh, there are three maybe uh, areas that we should look at here. Number one is the RCEP agreement in itself as an FTA. Because if you will look at an F uh, RCEP agreement as an FTA, so basically it's a contract among economies and countries. So kontrata po ito. And the value of this agreement would depend on how you utilize this contract. Because that contract is just a tool. So kahit na po marami po tayo FTAs, pero pag hindi natin ginamit, then of course, uh, ikaw yung matatalo. At yung kasamahan mo, yun ang gumagamit ng FTA. But again, before we go to that uh, extent of utilization, tingnan muna natin yung laman ng FTA. And I think that's the primordial issue po, Your Honor. That's why we are asking, of course, the indulgence of the committee and also our colleagues that let's focus first on the value of the agreement in itself. Okay? Of course, uh, may mga concerns sa open market. But I have mentioned earlier, open na po yung market natin. Liberalize na natin ang karamihan ng mga tariffs natin. Ngayon, ang second area po na siguro importante is that siyempre yung influx po ng mga imported goods. No, yun ang takot ng mga local industries natin. Now, doon sa influx po ng imported goods, uh, dalawa po yun. No? Uh, number one, ko ang influx ay raw materials, intermediate goods, okay lang po yun kasi gagamitin yun as input sa production. Doon naman sa final goods, at least mag-benefit yung mga end consumers natin. Okay? Now, as to the aspect of competition, siguro po ang isang bagay na dapat din o kailangan o talaga natin dito yung ano ng private sector is yung utilization ng mga trade remedies po natin. Because itong mga trade remedies na yan, embedded po ito, hindi lang sa RCEP po, but in all our FTAs. And in fact, dito sa RCEP po, nadagdagan pa yung ating uh, remedies. Kasi in addition dun sa mga trade remedies sa WTO agreement, meron tayong RCEP, the Transitional Safeguards. Ano ba itong safeguard na ito, measures? Kapag meron pong, let's say, threat sa industry because of the influx of certain goods, no? whether it's agricultural or industrial goods, then you can resort to these uh, safeguard measures under RCEP. And what can you do? No? You can suspend your commitment, the implementation, or you can also increase the rate of the tariff rates that you are implementing. Pwede kang bumalik doon sa MFN mo, or yung dating applied rate mo. So, ito yung mga measures. And I think um, ito yung palagi rin po namin sinasabi when we engage. Kasi po marami mga available measures po under our trade agreements that our private sector should utilize so that they can be competitive with foreign competitors. Kasi po, same thing ho. If we have the same concern, yung concern po na yan, concern din po ng ibang economies and countries. So, in other words, dun po yung ano, dapat na titignan natin. And then, the third area po na siguro uh, isa rin dapat pag-usapan is yung collaboration po natin. So halimbawa po, nag-concur na tayo sa RCEP agreement, yung pinaka-importante po rito, yung strong partnership talaga ng government and private sector. So yung mga programa na lay down ng gobyerno, etc., then we have to work on that together. At if necessary that we establish a dedicated team for that, our secretary is open to that po, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, agriculture, uh, ano, ano lang. ASEC, Padre, you want to say something? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, 
just to add my voice uh, to Asek Alan's uh, interventions. Uh, Doon sa mga issues na ni raise ni Secretary Montemayor, uh, si Yusek Ordonez and si Mr. Raul. Uh, first one, uh, although na-address na ni uh, na-address na ito ni Asek uh, Alan uh, on on the issue of non-consultation, uh, binanggit ni Asek Alan na uh, we did uh, I think nine uh, nine consultations on RCEP uh, doon sa committee that was uh, chaired by uh, Mr. Raul. Uh, ito from 2015 lang pero I know uh, uh, soon after the initiation of the negotiations dito nung 2013 ay nagkaroon na kami ng consultations pero di lang kasi namin makita kung kailan nangyari yung mga ibang meet, earlier meetings kaya itong from 2015 lang to 2019 yung nasa listahan namin. So, nabanggit nila na nawala yung committee uh, noong August uh, 2019. Uh, pero we'd like to inform the committee na although nawala nga yung lahat ng committee sa PICAF at that time, hindi, hindi, hindi sila in existence dahil nagkaroon ng uh, pagbabago sa PICAF uh, natin. Uh, Noong 2018 pa ho, uh, natapos yung, yung market access negotiations sa, sa RCEP. So yung mga offers natin on tariff reduction, tariff elimination, natapos na ho by 2018. So those were covered uh, nung mga consultations natin. And uh, yung sinabi ni Sir Raul kanina na hindi pa klaro kung ano yung sensitive, ano yung mga excluded, uh, na uh, alam ko na i-report na ho namin sa kanila ito noong 2018. And yung natira na lang po uh, from 2018 to 2019, I think is yung textual negotiations na sa trading goods. So na-cover nga ho yung, yung, yung uh, requests and offers sa, sa negotiations under RCEP. Ngayon po, yung sa market access, sinabi ho ni Secretary Montemayor na uh, with RCEP, magkakaroon ng further opening of, of, of the uh, uh, market, uh, especially for agricultural products. Uh, nabanggit niya yung carrot, halimbawa, will be faced with uh, more competition from yung mga RCEP parties. Uh, pero nabanggit na rin ho ni Asik Hepti na kasama yung carrot sa mga excluded sa sa negotiations natin sa RCEP, yung mga sensitive and highly sensitive agricultural products. Wala hong galawan yung tariffs nito mga to. In fact, uh, dito ho sa RCEP, uh, napaka konti lang ho yung galaw sa taripa sa agriculture when you look at the offers doon sa mga individual uh, uh, ano ba to? yung parties sa RCEP. Uh, ang ibig kong sabihin, Kung titingnan ho natin yung yung uh, concessions natin sa mga ASEAN, sa ASEAN countries under sa RCEP ay napakaliit ho ng ano, wala hong, hindi ho maiikukumpara yung yung offer natin sa RCEP doon sa kung ano yung existing commitments na natin sa sa ASEAN, sa ASEAN Trade in Goods Agreement. At ganun din ho yung, yung doon sa ASEAN plus one FTA natin. Uh, napakaliit ho nung ating ibinigay na additional concessions sa mga uh, FTA partners ng ASEAN uh, yung na parties dito sa, sa RCEP na na-improve yung, yung commitment natin doon sa individual FTA. Uh, mabibilang lang ho. At uh, Ka uh, ganun din po yung sa ano yung improvement nila sa sa ating export sa kanila yung tariff nila sa atin dahil nga meron na tayong FTA sa kanila uh, kung bibilangin ho natin yung mga concessions natin sa agriculture under sa RCEP na mas uh, preferential ikum kung ikukumpara mo sa ASEAN plus 1 FTA uh, for Australia and New Zealand for example uh, siyam na tariff lines lang po yung meron tayong improvement. 
uh, from the com commitments na binigay natin uh, under the ASEAN Australia uh, Free Trade Agreement. So, siyang na tariff lines lang ho yun. Uh, sa China ho, walong tariff lines lang ho yung may improvement tayo. At sa Korea, 23 tariff lines lang po. Uh, in terms of trade value ho, napakaliit ho nung coverage nitong mga to. Less than, uh, less than 2%. Uh, less than, actually sa Australia and New Zealand, uh, less than 1% lang ho yung trade coverage dito. Uh, sa China, ganun din ho. Uh, sa Korea lang, medyo mataas, mga 2% po yung trade coverage. Pero that was in 2011. Medyo outdated na ho yung data natin dito. Pero yung sa concessions naman na nakuha natin uh, dito sa RCEP, uh, nakita namin na mas marami yung improvements na nakuha natin as compared to the concessions na nakuha natin sa ASEAN, ASEAN Plus One uh, FTA. Uh, halimbawa sa Korea, meron silang improvements on 234 tariff lines. And then sa Japan, merong 269 tariff lines. Yun hong sa ibang parties, uh, medyo malaki na ho yung, yung concessions na binigay nila sa plus one. So wala na ho tayo, wala na ho silang maibigay na additional concessions. So ganito po yung, yung nangyari sa market access uh, negotiations. Uh, ngayon, kung magbe-benefit ho tayo sa, dito sa nakuha natin sa RCEP, uh, uh, hindi ho kami expert dito. May mga present na ho yung, yung ating experts dito na yung mga projections nila sa benefits na makukuha natin sa, sa, uh, from RCEP and we leave that uh, to the experts. Uh, and uh, meron din hong nabanggit si Secretary Montemayor na under RCEP, uh, subsidies will be prohibited. And uh, wala ho dito yung yung walang provision dito sa RCEP na nagbabawal dito. So ang ibig sabihin, yung disciplines natin sa provi uh, provision ng subsidies uh, sa agriculture sector will be under sa kung ano yung discipline sa WTO. Uh, hindi ko pala nabanggit kanina yung dun sa market access uh, sa trading goods. Uh, meron din tayong nakuhang uh, we can say favorable uh, commitment uh, ano ba to? concession from them in terms of rules of origin kasi uh, doon sa mga FTAs natin uh, limited ho yung pwede nating source ng, ng inputs halimbawa uh, sa exports natin ng, ng processed tuna, canned tuna uh, under sa FTAs natin ngayon kailangan sa'yo yung tuna na gagamitin mo or doon sa trading partner mo. Ngayon, under sa RCEP, uh, meron nung provision doon na pwede kang kumuha uh, ng, ng input from uh, uh, RCEP parties, tapos meron din yung accumulation uh, rule na pwede kang kumuha ng input from other parties at pwede mong gamitin yon uh, under RCEP para magamit mo yung yung concession na binigay nila para doon sa halimbawa sa tuna po yung uh, mas bale lumawak yung pwedeng pagkukuhanan ng inputs uh, at pwede mong gamitin para mak makukuha mo pa rin yung 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 concession yung preferential tariff uh, as compared to the ano pag gumamit to the other FTAs na pag gumamit ka ng outside uh, input from outside the party hindi mo na makukuha yung preferential tariff. So, yun lang po muna yung, yung pwede naming i-share uh, doon sa uh, response namin, doon sa mga issues na na-raise kanina. Uh, salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you for that, no, Asik Padre. Uh, before I recognize the, ano, the others who are calling for the uh, floor, si Dr. Cororaton, who is in uh, Virginia, uh, do you want to say something, Doc? Dr. Cororaton, kasi uh, you know it's three o'clock in the morning there, so yeah, uh, I I I just want to emphasize, uh, okay, uh, two indicators since you, since uh uh your honor, uh if you want to look at one solid indicator of improvement or 
the Philippine economy. Uh, is the poverty incidence of 40%, more than 40% in uh, mid-90s to 16.7%. And 70% of that poverty is in, agri is in rural areas uh, dependent on agriculture. And then another indicator is the reduction in consumer price index. Uh, I mean, the, the inflation rate. Okay, that, that's one, one uh, two indicators that would really affect poverty. And there's really a, uh, uh, and then there's another indicator that I, I, I want to, to, to show, uh, to, to mention, is the increase in FDI in the mid uh, 20, uh, 27, about uh, a billion US dollars of FDI. Now it increased to about $10 billion FDI in 2017 and 20 sustained increase in FDI, except for that, of course, in late, late, uh, say, uh, few years because of pandemic, there's a decline in FDI. Uh, those are the indicators I, want, I wanted to mention, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Doc. Three, three indicators which improved. Yan ang sinasabi mo. Yes, and, 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 and then we attribute this to the... We attribute it to free trade agreements? Ganun ba yan? No. Uh, part of that is really uh, uh, the, uh, the, this uh, foreign direct investment, significant in increase in direct invest in investment. And then, oh. uh, if you, uh, and then the reduction in poverty incidence and uh, essentially because of reduction in, in, in inflation rate and a better quality of goods that's uh, coming in. Why are you why the, why are you citing them? Why are you citing the improvements in the three indicators? Nga? Uh, Essentially, uh, because uh, a, a lot of uh, factors, a lot of factors uh, contributed to this, and one of them is really the opening opening up of the economy. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. One, but okay, one of them theore theoretically, uh, theoretically one of them. Yeah. Theoretically, oh, okay. One of them. okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, doc. Thank you, doc. And uh, good morning, sure. Nasayu Jan. Secretary, then uh, yeah. with the permission of Joseph Puruganan, uh, or Secretary Montemayor, Muna, and then si Joseph Puruganan. Sige, sir, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, quick, quick lang po ito, yung, with respect to subsidies, ang binagit ko po yung government subsidies, not subsidies in general. Uh, pangalawa po, yung sa absence of consultation, bakit po tinigil? yung konsultasyon na apparently up to July 2019 uh, during the time of Secretary, I think even Alcala and Pinyol, tuloy-tuloy naman po yung konsultasyon. So bakit po pinutol? Lalo pat, uh, pat about to finish na po yung negotiation sa RCEP. Critical po yun eh, yung last two years eh. So bakit pinutol? I want to know why. And then number three, Mr. Chairman, I think uh, a major reason for the skepticism about the benefits of this RCEP is the actual Kwansiguro, uh, the actual experience with government with respect to its treatment of agriculture. Kasi yun nga po, may mga opportunities sa market na bubuksan po ng RCEP tsaka ng mga previous uh, free trade agreements natin. Pero walang maliwanag nga na plano as uh, the previous speaker said. Budgets, plans on how really to take advantage of this market opportunity. So I think the, the Senate, Mr. Chairman, has to right. really ask for a very solid uh, plan uh, from the DA Sorry. and the other agencies That's on good. how exactly we can take uh, advantage of these uh, market opportunities. And then the last point, Mr. Chairman, on the matter of threats, uh, I'm glad that uh, ASEC Hepti mentioned the safeguard uh, one measures as a trade remedy. Unfortunately, in the case of agriculture, the past, uh, I would say, five years, uh, especially since the price tarification law took effect, hindi po ginagamit, ayaw pong gamitin ng ating pare, trade uh, uh, economic managers at ng DA. Yung safeguard measures in the case of rice, uh, very clear in the, in the rice tarification law, uh, the Secretary Moto Propio or the Tariff Commission they can uh, already impose uh, temporary safeguard duties to arrest uh, additional uh, uh, import, import volumes that have been uh, hurting or threatened to seriously injure, in this case, yung ating pong rice sector. Hindi po nila ginagamit eh. 
Uh, at na, napakaliwanag naman po na sa, ang laki-laki ng import levels during the past uh, two years such that the prices of palay every year, Mr. Cheban, since the RTL took effect in 2019, talagang bagsak po yung presyo ng palay. And it is attributable clearly to ano, the surge in imports. Despite what the what Neda says, wala daw connection. Kapag tataka nga po, Mr. Cheban, na our premier economic and development uh, agency in government says there is no one connection between the surge of imports in rice from abroad and the low price of palay. Maputi pa si Congresswoman Stella Kimbo po ng House, who is a former, I think, uh, Dean of Economics in UP. Siya pa nag-correct po sa NEDA natin. Imagine our premier economic agency saying no connection between import volumes and uh, the price of local palay. So, yun po ang problema namin, Mr. Chairman. Maganda nga po yung mga kwan, projections, market openings, meron daw mga trade remedies like safeguard uh, measures, but hindi naman po ginagamit eh. So uh, our farmers are left uh, kwan, uh, very much uh, on their own. So baka, ang, kaya nga po ang pangamba, maganda na naman itong pangako under RCEP as in the case of the GATT Uruguay agreements, but in actual experience and practice, mukhang iba po yun yung nangyayari. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Puruganan, sir. Mr. Yes. Sir, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a few points po to, uh, uh, by way of reaction to, to what uh, the DTI and the others have said. Una po, a quick reaction lang po to Dr. Cororato. And I'm surprised po that uh, at this time that he would still make the argument that FTAs result to an improvement in poverty. Kasi even among uh, mainstream economists po, uh, just to cite a few, I mean, even let's say Joseph Stiglitz, no, a Nobel Prize winning economist, have for some time argued already that the the pace at which poor, poorer nations open their markets to trade should coincide with the development of new institutions. So roads, schools, banks, and the like that make transitions easier and generate real opportunities. Sabi po ni Stiglitz, trade by itself can do more harm than good. And they point out to not just poverty, I think we need to look at inequality numbers then po. And if you if you look at inequality numbers, the Philippine uh, income inequality in the Philippines have not improved, no? Very high, 40%, if I'm not mistaken po, Mr. Chair. So just to react to that, statement by Dr. Coraraton. Pangalawa po, dun sa issue po of consultations na nabanggit kanina, uh, we acknowledge po, no, and, and tama po si Secretary, uh, uh, Assistant Secretary Hefti, that we've met with the DTI on RCEP. Pero yun po ang problema, Mr. Chairman, eh. Uh, at sinab inadmit naman po ni uh, ASEC Hefti yun, no, na Itong consultations po na, na ito ay hindi napag-uusapan yung details of the agreement. Kaya pasensya na po kung ngayon po nagsasulputan from the stakeholders itong mga issues na to kasi we never no, knew what was inside the deals that were, that were negotiated by government. In fact, itong mga text po na to together with the uh, concrete commitments, I mean, uh, yeah, the, 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 the concessions and the commitments made by government no lumabas na lang po after the negotiations eh, nung na-release yung text. Kaya nga po dun sa intervention ko, I was pointing out, the burden of proof is really on government kasi sila ang may alam eh. So pasensya na po kung kami, ngayon tayo nagre-raise at ngayon natin pinag-uusapan itong mga concerns na to kasi wala ko kaming time to really study the details. Sila po ang may alam nung details eh. eh so una po, yes, may consultation po. Pero mer I would like to point out po a study this is an international study po made, uh, conducted by experts who look into RCEP uh, as against the uh, uh, global transparency and public participation criteria. At ang, ang results po ay fail. Failure po ang RCEP. No? So in, we're not just talking of whether consultations were conducted. Dapat po tignan natin non-transparent, negligible public availability of official information. Lacking in independent social and environmental and economic impact assessments. Kasama po yan eh. Uh, plagued by numerous examples of vested interest influencing the process. Ito po yung results ng study ha, which I can send no, to, to Comsec uh, later on, no, a copy of the study. 
deprived of Asian parliaments and elected officials representation and input. No, the Senate can say if, if it was involved at all in the process leading up to the negotiations. So all in all, for failure, no, we do not question that consultations were conducted. This consult consultation should be assessed based on standards of transparency and public participation. And then finally, po, Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang ulit stress po yung isang issue that I raised and which Trade Justice Pilipinas raised in its submission. Yung impact po on, on trade revenue loss. If we can look deeply into this po, no? in, in my presentation po, ang sabi po, nung study, I was citing a study uh, by Untat Economist Rashni Banga and Boston University. Ang estimates po nila eh, loss of 2.9 billion pesos eh. So if we can, you know, if we can hear from our um, DTI officials po, kung ano po ang una, they, do they agree na this could lead to potentially tariff revenue losses amounting to 2.9 billion pesos? And if so, uh, malaking bagay po ito, no? And let me again, finally, maiksi na lang po, Mr. Chairman, no? Point to a paper by Raba Areski, no? Chief Economist of the African Development Bank and Harvard Kennedy School of Government. Uh, paper po ito on trade liberalization and taxation. Ang sabi po doon, and I quote, trade liberalization can lower economic growth for some developing countries and hence limit the expansion of domestic tax revenues. Not with, notwithstanding the contention over the effect of trade liberalization on growth, tariff revenue losses following trade liberalization can be hard to replace with domestic sources. So pagkitignan lang po natin ano yung effect talaga on uh, trade revenue loss, especially at a time that we do need all the resources to combat this COVID-19 pandemic. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, ano, Alan, uh, you have something to say? Or... Uh, Reaction? Uh, yes, quick reply lang po, uh, Your Honor. Uh, number one po is that uh, with respect to studies, no? uh, of course, uh, the reality, uh, Your Honor, is that uh, marami mo talaga studies no? on RSF, even FDA. At siyempre, uh, depende po sa orientation, depende sa model na ginamit, depende sa mga parameters na ginamit sa studies, magkakaiba po yung findings. So, in other words, uh, it's a continuing debate. But I think uh, if there is one very important uh, element that we have to take into account is that with respect to the RSF, and I highlighted this last uh, hearing, is that many international organizations has recognized the value and importance of RSF when it comes to post-COVID economic recovery. So yung UNTAD, yung ADB, and of course, yung ASEAN no? and other RCEP participating countries, referring to AFTC, have recognized the value and importance of RCEP. And to give you an update, uh, Your Honor and colleagues, in fact, RCEP is set na to take effect on January 1, 2022. Kasi na-meet na po yung threshold, yung numbers ng ASEAN member state na magdi-deposit ng instrument of gratification at ganun din po sa ASEAN free trade partners. So, ngayon po, nakapag-deposit na si Brunei, si Singapore, si Lao, si Cambodia, si Thailand, si Vietnam. And then sa AFPs po, si Japan, si China, si Australia, and New Zealand, nakapag-deposit po. So, that's why January 1, 2022, mag-take effect na po ang ASEP. Ngayon po, ang isang importante po na dapat tingnan natin, and it was highlighted by ASEC Noel Padre earlier, is that Pagdating po sa pag-open ng market, we have to bear in mind na maliit lang po yung naitagtag no? na tariff liberalization kasi nga may mga existing ASEAN plus one. But if there is one big advantage that our stakeholders need here is the fact that they should be given access to several countries which are parties to the RCEP. Kasi po pag hindi ka RCEP party, so, hindi ka makakapag-source ng raw materials mo dito sa 14 uh, economies na to. So, kung ililimit mo lang sa ASEAN Japan or Philippine Japan, for example, then sourcing of raw materials would just be limited to Philippines and Japan 
or go ASEAN Japan, ASEAN member state and Japan. But here you have the opportunity to take advantage of the rules of the curriculum. Kaya dapat po sana tingnan po natin. Kasi ang hirap po i-visualize yung senaryo na pagdating next year, yung mga kalaban po natin, I mean the other countries for example, may access sila sa wider uh, sourcing of raw materials and intermediate goods. Tapos po tayo ay wala. And we know the value of that in the manufacturing sector. Now, we have to bear in mind also that ASEAN as an economic uh, uh, free trade area for that matter, no, is we need partners. No? We can afford to embrace an inward policies. Na tayo tayo lang po. Kasi ang hubs po ng manufacturing na concentrate po halo sa region o natin. And in that exercise, we need strong partners. At andito sa RSF yung three emerging economies and big economies China, Japan, and Korea. And first time mo ito, nasa isang agreement po sila. So, I hope that this is something that we have to bear in mind. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, Your Honor, uh, let's uh, delineate the areas of consideration. One, let's focus first on the FTA in itself. As an agreement, dun muna ho tayo. I know that there are some concerns in implementation. That's another issue. May mga concerns po doon sa utilization, that's another issue. But siguro po i-fragmentize po natin. But first thing first po, uh, we have this agreement and dito po tayo mag-focus. Kung meron po tayong issues and concerns sa uh, implementation, I hope that this will not disrupt the concurrence process. Kasi po, uh, baka humamaya, mamislid po natin no? kung ano talaga yung core issue on why we are here. We are here to, of course, examine the agreement, the text in itself, the provisions. If these are beneficial to the country and if there are enough safety nets or flexibilities to uh, address any uh, um, any exigencies in the future that can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Asukepti. Okay, so we, we will... Uh... Uh, we will be conscious of that, uh, no, no, of that task. The task is uh, whether or not the Senate should uh, concur in the ratification of the international agreement or the treaty. The words of which, the text of which, plus all the the text of all the annexes and uh, appendices are available to all of us. So parehas po ang ating uh, binabasa at discuss. Okay, so ganito. Upon the suggestion of uh, uh, Mr. Ordonez, we uh, the committee will will try to swing it, sir. No, we will try we will try our best to organize that that uh, that uh, face to face uh, debate or exchange of ideas. We will limit it to three to four hours. Ang idea ko lang sana if we can make it like a for those online, it's like a webinar for them. So that uh, we can involve the people and we can also involve the staff of the senators. Uh, yun po ang gawin natin. That, uh, we, I will discuss this with my staff and the co committee secretary if we can, if we can, if we can uh, swing this, this idea. Uh, and in the meantime, I, need, I will need to get the pulse of the members, the sentiment of the members of this committee, whether... Uh, uh, the hearing should be terminated already or should just be suspended because they need another session. So I, I will have to consult with the members of the uh, Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, that, so that is the that is this that is now the feeling of the of the chairman. So we yeah, can please. wrap up. We yeah. can wrap up if there are no other uh, comments. Uh, yes, Mr. Ordon, yes. Go well, ahead, one sir. minute. I think we are blessed that both assets are good, no? and we've learned a lot from them. And we want to let them know we're supporting them. We just want to be open to each other. And I'm very open because uh, since there's no consultation, you probably have brilliant ideas which here. So I'd like to say we thank you, Mr. Pimentel, uh, Senator. And we just want like a seven-day postponement <laughs> because we can just have this one last thing. And two days later, we can ratify it. But I'm just saying, sir, that I respect these two aspects. They're really good. And I learned so much from them. And we'll be open to them. We'd also like them to be open to us. <laughs> so it's win-win. But we are one nation and we work for the Senate, okay? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, yes, sir, Chairman. Yes, sir. Quick point. I'm just concerned, Mr. Chairman, parang we are being stampeded into, uh, you know, Senate concurrence with that January 1 deadline. 
what is so sacrosanct about that January one? Can we not wait a couple not, of months to fully? Not, nothing, it? sir. Not nothing. Uh, by the way, ako, ako, I receive. I just received the information from ASIC Hepti by way of information lang po yon. It did not. It did not uh, even add to the pressure on my shoulder, sir. Nothing. <laughs> Kasi alala ko si Chema sa WTO noon, yung nalabang agreement sa TRIPS, Trade and Intellectual Property Rights, sumasakit na po yung ulo ko sa kakabasa ng one eh. That particular uh, uh, fund section uh, agreement. We're talking here about, uh, I think, uh, more than 500 pages. Not mm -hmm. to mention, meron pa yung annexes. So you have to be super uh, men and women, Mr. Chairman, in the Senate and your staff. To be yes. able to absorb all of this uh, content and detail in just two hearings, masyado naman yata ang fan. Uh, unfair Le yung expectation po ng executive sa inyo. Salamat yeah. po. Well, in between the hearings, we've been do, uh, we've been doing a lot of readings also and uh, con uh, informal consultations to understand uh, some of the concepts. So kaya nga ganito eh. and and some some of the groups uh, just prov just submitted their position paper. So you also give us time to go over the position papers just submitted so uh and i need to consult the members of the uh, committee sir so so we will just have to suspend yeah attorney abad you want to say something i i can see you yeah, attorney yeah. Abad? Mm. yes go uh, ahead uh, yes mr chairman thank you I, I i remember the last hearing i pointed out that uh what would be a good resource material is to review the records of the uh, Tanyada versus Angara case, uh, which involved the whole debate regarding our accession and membership in the WTO. It will point out the constitutionality of entering into agreements like this, no? Um, but I also, you know, I, I, of course, in, in the, for the purpose of transparency and, you know, thoroughness, uh, I think it's good also to give it enough time, but also to be mindful of, you know, I'm sure, quite sure that DTI did not, you know, railroad this whole process. No? I, I was conscious of and aware and mindful of their, that whole long process of DTI's involvement in negotiating for the RCEP. So this is not some kind of, you know, surprise that, that, that all of a sudden, something magically came out of the air. No, the, this process has been going on a long time, and I know DTI has been working hard on this, and this is not just RCEP, but evolving from the ASEAN Plus process. But if there's, if uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if the Senate needs any help with regard to the legality or constitutionality of this process and our accession and membership, uh, I just wanted to volunteer and help, you know, help you in any way. Uh, so that uh, when you finalize all of this, it would have been done in the most, uh, you know, with respect for due process, with the respect for um, transparency, and of course, making sure that uh, the, the, this whole process is for the benefit of uh, the Philippine economy and society in general. Yan lang po. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Pero ito, ito lang observation ko. So far, I think no one has raised the issue of uh, constitutionality. So far, uh, it's, it's, it's more of whether it is wise, uh, wise for us to again enter into uh, another free trade agreement given the WTO and then the other uh, plus one agreement. So that's why, that's why we need data, studies plus data Plus, siguro, plus testimony of uh, beneficiaries that we really benefited from uh, this free trade uh, regime, no? we, which we are in. According to ASIC Hefty, we are already in this uh, free trade regime. Uh, too late now to to go into a uh, reverse you know, gear. No? Uh, but you know, whether this new one, is, is, it, is it wise to enter into this new uh, free trade agreement? Which basically, inaamin din naman uh, ng uh, our two assistant secretaries that basically uh, is a codification of our ASEAN plus one agreements with a little improvement here and there. Maybe our ROO, competition, chapters, may mga ganong uh, improvements na. So, yun po yun. So, we, we will uh, have to study again the claims and then uh, hear... Uh, uh, opinions to the contrary 
Uh, so that's why we will pursue that uh, proposal of Mr. Ordonez. Kumagawa po namin, kumagawa yeah. namin sir, we will schedule it at the soonest possible time. Ah, yes sir, yes sir. Yeah, you, you say something? But I'd like to make a request. This is really big time. So we want at least one senator to listen. Because if your analyst who listen to us, the one who should listen to us should know more than us. Eh? <laughs> if you got junior people listening to us, how will they tell? No, I would like to request at least one senator to do it because that's why we elected you. We think you are wiser than us. I mean, not you, as senators. No, I cannot then, have the four hour meeting and juniors will listen and interpret it for you. Cannot be at least one senator. You know, request call. One senator should attend. Huh? Thank you. It it will be it will probably be a committee hearing. We'll just we'll, we will just devise it uh, uh, differently, uh, structure it differently. But but it will be an official proceeding of the Senate. Uh, transcript will be uh, taken. Uh, proceedings will be recorded. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So anybody else? So okay, Sigur, we we all need the time to go over all the submissions and also to process everything that has been stated in the past uh, two hearings. So. Comsec, any any administrative matter that we need to address? Um, okay, na po, sir. So far, uh, we just remind okay. them yung hindi pa nagsasubmit ng, uh, ng position adito, paper. And ito si PIDS, uh, Dr. Kimba. You want to say something, uh, Dr. Uh, Kimba? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, apologies, I, I I was just about to raise my hand. Um, uh, I I would just like to um, reiterate that our uh, our study, our estimate. Is actually ex ante, so we are actually looking at a uh, possible cases. No, so we looked at the case that we would join, the benefits of what would happen if we join, and what would happen if we remain in the status quo, if if everyone else would join. So we we looked at both cases. We looked at the possibilities of the opportunities, and we also looked at the threats. So we're trying to pr present a balanced point of view of of our set. And regarding the the discussion also on. Um, what would what is what's the benefits from our other FTAs? May I uh, point to a paper that uh, we have written, be, um, Mark Baral and myself, in uh, it's available in the PIDS website. We have assessed the impact of uh, PJPA on our exports, and what what we have shown is that uh, it actually it's actually benefiting. Oh, it's not immediate, but the the, the sector is actually benefited. We have increased exports, and we. Uh, we have experienced an increased exports um, in a lot of sectors because of the the trade agreement. So yes, uh, there is there, we actually see we have actually seen and we've calculated um, some benefits uh, because of our trade agreement, especially for PJ. Uh, that would be all, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for this opportunity. So, uh, Dr. Kimba, there is there is no new study. Ang sinasabi mo lang, you, you already have uh, the, the the study with uh, Mr. Baran ben, sorry. Mark Baran and yourself, nasa, nasa website na ninyo. Is that it? Yes, that's, sir. We, okay, we, have, um, we have assessed the impact of uh, PJ back in 2019, uh, Mr. Chair. So, yes, our our FTA with uh, Japan, plus yes, the, yes, the plus your presentation last uh, hearing. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. Available at the website of uh, PIDS, yes. tama? Yes, Mr. Oh, Chair. Everybody can, uh, can download and access para... Tignan po natin if the if, so that there will if there is a critique there, uh, we 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 will uh, we will listen to the critique. Oh. Okay, anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Oh, so so in the meantime, we will just suspend. Okay, because I I also need to consult with my members and uh, what steps that they still want us to take. In the meantime, we will just suspend. Hindi natin ito minamadali masyado. Okay na ba yun, uh, Secretary Montemayor? Okay ba yun? Hindi natin ito binabadali masyado. Oh, okay okay na yan. <laughs> Kailangan maintindihan. Yan ang importante. Kailangan maintindihan. <laughs> okay. okay, so if, if if there are no more comments, so I would like to thank all of, all of our resource persons, all of our uh, fellow workers in government who are here uh, with us. So... We, we will see you again. I'm sure there will be another there will be another hearing to formally close the, the, the hearings on this matter. So we, we will inform everyone on when this will be. So salamat po sa lahat sa, sa inyo. Salamat. Our hearing is hereby uh, suspended. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you again. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you, Senator.